Is this exclusive video of the owners and lead salesmen from Summit Contracting all being led into a federal courtroom in handcuffs this morning. This is help is being lined up for people who say they were victimized by Summit Contracting, losing tens of thousands of dollars for work oftentimes never completed by that company. First told you about it yesterday, about the federal indictments and what prosecutors call a scheme to defraud people out of more than a million and a half bucks. It is the latest in a first alert investigation. We started on Summit Contracting nearly three years ago. Sarah Thompson has the exclusive video from court, the latest on what is now a fast moving case throughout the court system. Our cameras were rolling as Nate Smith, one of Summit Contracting's owners, walked into federal court this morning to turn himself in. It didn't take long for all four people indicted yesterday by a grand jury on bank and wire fraud charges to be led by U.S. Marshals in handcuffs into a federal courtroom. Chad Champers, his wife Gina Champers, Smith and Jeffrey O'Brien, Summit's lead salesman, all walked in not uttering a word. While our cameras are not allowed inside federal court proceedings, we did sit inside, watching each person appear individually in front of a judge, their indictment carefully read. Prosecutors allege Summit Contracting used deceptive, misleading tactics to con customers into using two specific financing companies Summit was working with. But instead of signing loan applications, prosecutors say Summit was getting customers to sign other documents that almost immediately released money from that financing company and put it straight into Summit's hands. But customers continue to tell us they're still on the hook for paying back loans to those financing companies, even though prosecutors argue work on their homes was never complete or in some cases never even started. Chad Champers also faces additional wire fraud and money laundering charges after investigators say he was given nearly $300,000 through the federal Paycheck Protection Program for coronavirus relief, but instead used it for personal gain. In court, all four people pled not guilty and were allowed to leave, but did agree to surrender passports and show up for all future hearings. And those will come quickly. Because of speedy trial laws, if the cases go to trial, that would actually happen in just over two months from now. While the case works to move quickly through court, we spent a lot of time today trying to answer questions from victims about what they should do now. Here's what we found so far. Many of the officials who've been working on this case for the last three years will try to answer questions and explain the court process in a meeting next Wednesday night at 530 at the Brown County Sheriff's Office. Victim witness staff from the U.S. Attorney's Office are working to notify all victims. Each of the four people indicted faces more than a million dollars in fines and decades in prison if convicted. An emotional roller coaster. That's how one woman describes the last 48 hours after seeing the owners of former De Pere Business Summit Contracting charged in federal court. We first told you Tuesday the former owners, Nate Smith, Chad Champers, and his wife Gina Champers, along with salesman Jeffrey O'Brien, were indicted on nearly a dozen wire and bank fraud charges. Federal prosecutors say Summit Contracting used misleading, deceptive tactics to con customers out of more than one and a half million dollars. We've been talking with victims repeatedly since 2019 when we aired the first of several first alert investigations on Summit Contracting. Today at a first alert exclusive, we hear from one victim who's become the voice for dozens of other victims fighting for justice. Just full of emotions, um, tears of joy, um, I was afraid, I was thankful, I couldn't wait to tell the world. Mary Klimchak has never really had a problem being vocal about her issues with Summit Contracting Incorporated. After trying for months to resolve problems on her own, Mary called us for the first time back in 2019, telling us her bank account was drained of tens of thousands of dollars and the roof Summit Contracting installed on her Marinette County property was never completely fixed by the company. Once she spoke up, victim after victim after victim started doing the same thing, all sharing similar stories and showing us the paperwork. All people saying they too were victims of Summit Contracting, not just upset about poor workmanship or work not even being completed in the first place, it was financially devastating, they'd all told us. People have not been able to recover. Um, recoup or fix their properties. They um, felt so depressed um, that 
I was approached that they were filing bankruptcy. Klimchak became the voice for other victims, too afraid to speak up, trying to encourage them not to give up year after year. Just hang in there was the biggest word I could ever say, but that grows old after a while. Finally this week, when the wire and bank fraud indictments hit federal court, putting in writing the exact same financial problems those victims had been telling us, Klimchak felt relief. I can only hope that all of you that have been affected, there's light at the end of the tunnel, and none of us are going away. Klimchak also penned a letter addressing Summit Contracting and the investigators who worked the case. We'll share that tonight at 5. We also have new information about that meeting next Wednesday at the Brown County Sheriff's Office that's meant for victims only. You will have to now RSVP. We've put all the information you need to know on our website at WBAY.com. Questions from viewers continue pouring in about what they should do about fraudulent loans taken out in their names in connection to a now closed contracting business. As we first told you on Tuesday, the former owners and salesperson for Summit Contracting, Chad Champers, Gina Champers, Nate Smith, and Jeffrey O'Brien, have been indicted in federal court on nearly a dozen wire and bank fraud charges. Federal prosecutors say they use deceptive, misleading tactics to get customers to unknowingly take out large loans for home improvement projects, but kept the money for themselves. In the three years since we've been airing First Alert investigations, customers continue to tell us those third-party financing companies are still after them for money from those fraudulent loans. In another First Alert investigation tonight, Sarah Thompson finds out one of those companies is in big trouble itself with the government for similar practices all over the country. Sarah. Bill, I talked to three different summit contracting victims just this morning who say the financing company Green Sky has been calling them nonstop for three years. One victim says she's received 40 phone calls at all times of the day and night in just the last few months. Each person told me they involve fraudulent loans, so they refuse to pay that money back. We found out they are among more than 6,000 people across the country dealing with the same kind of problem, all involving Green Sky. Green Sky labels itself a leading technology company, not a bank, that offers frictionless promotional payment options to consumers, making it fast and easy to get a loan. The government's translation of that careless practices that enable merchants to take advantage of vulnerable customers. We found that statement in documents issued in the last seven months by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the federal agency that's supposed to make sure banks, lenders, and financial companies treat you fairly. Instead, the Consumer Watchdog Agency found Green Sky, headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, violated the Consumer Financial Protection Act of 2010. Between 2014 and 2019, it found Green Sky received at least 6,000 complaints from consumers who stated they did not authorize submission of a loan application. The 57-page order says some consumers became aware of the loan for the first time when they saw their credit report or received billing statements, collection letters, and calls from Green Sky. How did it happen? The Consumer Bureau says Green Sky used a completely paperless application process, making it easy for a contracting company or other merchant to fill out the documents electronically, sitting in a person's home, as long as they had information like name, address, and social security number. Sound familiar? That's what customers of Summit Contracting have been telling us happened to them since 2019. And this week, in those federal indictments filed against the owners and lead salesmen of Summit, Green Sky was again named, alleging that's what the former De Pere business was doing. Several customers have told us they filed complaints and contested paying those fraudulent loans, but nothing has changed. In July, the Bureau said enough ordering Green Sky to refund and cancel up to $9 million for harmed consumers, pay a $2.5 million penalty, and put steps in place so it doesn't happen again. In a brief notice on its website, Green Sky writes, without admitting liability or wrongdoing, it agreed to pay the civil penalty, provide compensation to eligible customers capped at $3 million, and cancel up to $6 million in loans. 
Now this all happened late last summer, but all the victims having issues with Green Sky who've contacted us say they have yet to receive a penny and their credit ratings have still dropped significantly. Now we reached out to Green Sky today but haven't heard back. Those victims hope that meeting next week with local and federal officials will help fix all these problems.